Hey everybody, Gecko here, back with another nightly ramble, a midnight walk and talk. <sighs> so, I'm on night three of my four day weekend. So far it's been, eh mildly eventful didn't really do anything the first night uh, but last night me and the wife went out with some of her colleagues to a country and western dance hall over in Buda called Mavericks and we had some fun now, I don't really go into the country and western scene all that much it just never really has interested me i'm more of a heavy metal and blues fan so let me turn let me turn you around there we go but you know every once in a while i mean I, I when i say i don't like country i don't like contemporary country what i so uh, irreverently call redneck pop uh, because <laughs> that's basically what it is. Um, you know, I'm more of the Opeth and Volbeat and Candlemas and Metallica still and Iced Earth. And let's see, who else do I like? Ghost? I like Ghost. Uh, I like the more, like, black metal, bluesy, kind of dark. It's just my gig, you know? So, but we did have fun, I guess, sort of. My wife had fun. She loves to dance, and we never get to go dancing because I don't dance. So it was good for her to be able to get out and go dancing with friends. You know, even though I don't get out on the dance floor, there's no reason she shouldn't get out and dance, you know? So, oh, man, it is cold out here tonight. It's like getting down in the upper 40s. Oof. I got a shirt, a sweatshirt, hoodie, and my leather jacket on. And long pants and tennis shoes, my hiking shoes, instead of my sandals. I went walking earlier, right after the sun went down, and it was a little too cold for my tootsies. So I put my shoes back on. Which kind of brings me to what I wanted to talk about on this walk and talk was, you know, getting out on the trail, the Appalachian Trail, and dealing with cold temperatures because I do not like the cold. And it's not going to be like, like now where I'm just going for a walk in the cold and I get to go back in a warm house. I'm going to be stuck in these temperatures 24-7 that's going to be my real problem on the trail until you know the late winter spring is over and it's summertime i can deal my my ideal comfort range is about 75 outside 70 to 75 but you know You've seen me hiking here in 100 plus degree temperatures. I can do it. I may not like hiking in extreme heat, but I can do it. My main factor there is staying hydrated. Because, you know, I've said it before, I don't drink that much water every day. You know, just in my everyday life, I don't like, I don't drink water. I have since I've started working again um, I take a water bottle with me at work a liter 
and I'll drink it before I before the end of shift. Um, but that's the only water I drink other than coffee. So that getting onto the trail, I'm going to have, you know, even before the trail, I'm going to have to get used to drinking water, get my body used to it, my bladder used to it. Because I drink water right now, it goes right through me. I don't know if it's my body not used to absorbing the water as I drink it because I drink coffee all the time. My body's gotten used to not absorbing that much of it because of the caffeine and the diuretic. Um, but I need to get my body used to drinking water again and retaining it instead of eliminating it immediately. Um, so that's going to be my main fear getting out on a trail as far as being a successful through hike is dealing with the cold temperatures because because of my experience in the experiences in the army in upstate new york i've kind of become sensitive to cold because there were times we would be out in the field and it was below freezing and thank god i never got frostbite but i did get frost nip which is when your fingers and toes are basically red and very painful and kind of waxy, real smooth. That's happened to me several times. And that makes you become more, more susceptible to cold weather adversely so that's one of the things I'm gonna have to guard against when I get out on the trail I'm gonna have to get a good pair of gloves uh, maybe start out with some hand warmers uh, and always keep hand warmers on me until it's you know summertime until the temperatures are well above freezing at night uh, and keep a maybe one or two pairs in reserve for when I'm at elevation and it gets cold. Um, like when I get closer to the Whites and Mount Washington and that area where it, it gets cold again. Uh, I'm just gonna have to, you know, and layer up you know, and if I have to slow down when I'm hiking, that way my body can get warm, but I'm not sweating while it's cold. And then when I stop, I freeze, you know, kind of when I feel myself starting to overheat and where I'm fixing to sweat, you know, slow down and keep my body below that sweating threshold. It, it might sacrifice some miles on those days, but it'll keep me warm in the long run. And then of course, dealing with the fog and the humidity, you know, being in the clouds and getting wet, the rain and the cold rain I'm going to have to take extra precautions to stay dry and stay warm. Uh, and that's probably going to, I'm probably going to have to carry a full set of extra clothes that I can like put on when it's been raining or whatever and I get into camp I have a pair of clothes that I can hike in that are still dry and then have my night clothes as well so if I know it's going to be not raining the next day I can I have a pair of dry clothes I can put on until I can dry the clothes that I had been wearing out 
you know, and try to always stay in a dry pair of clothes as much as possible. Um, granted, that's going to be a little bit of extra weight, but I think I can deal. And once I get out there and my body becomes used to being in the elements 24-7, I think my body will adapt better um, with the temperature variances uh, because, you know, that's one of the drawbacks to living in modern society is we have basically eliminated the temperature variances within our lives which is to our own detriment it leaves us more susceptible to <clears throat> to heat stroke and hypothermia than somebody who works outside all the time you know farmers construction workers road crew where they're in the elements every day, you know, and their bodies are still acclimatized to those temperatures. Um, I'm definitely not acclim acclimatized to those temperature variances. And that's going to be one of my drawbacks on the trail. And I don't think I've ever heard anybody else talk about that. You know, it's kind of one of the downfalls of living in a modern society. So, I'm going to have to take extra precautions and kind of um, tweak my gear list to accommodate that. At least on the first trail. Hopefully, by the time I get to the PCT or the CDT, I won't have that need anymore. I can just pack the one pair of clothes and go, you know. So... That's one of the things I wanted to talk about. I say one of the things, like I had a whole list in my head, I don't. Um, but the temperatures and the cold weather, definitely. Not not so much the hot weather because I'm kind of used to it living in Texas. And, you know, like I said, I've been hiking in 90 and 100 degree temperatures. I just have to make sure I stay hydrated. Ugh. <sighs> Oh, sorry. Uh, still haven't heard anything back from Social Security or the my lawyers about the disability claim. It's still up in the air. Uh, really don't know what else to talk about. I do have, I think I've said this before, but I have new canvas wrap prints available in my Gecko's Trails gift store on Zazzle. I'll go ahead and put the link to that store in the description. I think I said that last time and I didn't do it, but I'll definitely do it this time. Yeah, because when I'm uploading the videos, you know, they have you put, fill in the description as you're uploading or before you upload. And I'm always in a rush to get it uploaded. And I said, well, I'll just go back later and, and edit the stuff in that I wanted in. I never do. Which is something I have to work on. Because I do. I, I want to get the videos uploaded as soon as possible so I have use of my phone again. Because the way I make these videos right now is I take the video clips like I'm doing now. And... When I'm done, I'll go over into iMovie. Well, first I'll go to Canva.com and make the uh, um. Well, I did. I went into Canva and I made the opening scene uh, that says "Walk and Talk." Um. 
and I put it in as the first clip and then I put the, the videos as I've shot them in and hit done. I'll title it and then I'll save it as a movie to my phone. So there for the little bit, I've got double the video being saved on my phone. I have the movie, but I also have the raw clips. So that is why I want to have a laptop or some sort of two-in-one tablet because by making the movies that way, I'm using double the memory space and shooting 4K video, these videos end up being gigabytes long, like sometimes 16 to 32 gigabytes long, which it doesn't really matter when you're uploading it to YouTube. YouTube, YouTube will accommodate it because there's no memory restriction uh, to uploading videos, <clears throat> to uploading videos. Um, not like there used to be. It used to be you could only upload a 15 minute video. Now you don't, it can be any length. I think, I think, no, I take that back. If I try to upload from iMovie directly to YouTube, it puts that 15 minute restriction on there. That's why I don't upload directly from my iMovie. That's why I always save it to my phone and then upload it from my photos and movies. That way that restriction isn't on there, which is why I need to find a better um, video editing software. One that will allow me a full range of editing, editing techniques, but not limit the lengths of my videos when I go to upload them to YouTube, like iMovie does. And it's probably going to end up being something that I have to pay for. I'm sure, I'm, I'm fairly confident there's not going to be a good free movie editing software that can do that. So, I don't know. If y'all have any suggestions about that, let me know in the comments. Not that anyone ever really comments on my videos other than, other than cyber bullier, bullies. Uh, every once in a while, I'll get somebody comment. But it, so far, it's it's been mainly on my, uh, my YMCA of the Rockies playlist. They don't really comment on, y'all don't really comment on my walk and talks. Um... Every once in a while, I'll get somebody that that became a subscriber and liked the walk and talk uh, format, but it's only been one or two. Anyway, and then I'm going to have to find a good, like, uh, royalty-free music service to, to uh, put music in my videos and that's going to be something else I'm going to have to teach myself how to use because you know I haven't really used music before except in that opening sequence that I used to use for my hikes which I'm still going to use once I get back on a trail until I get on the AT and then I'm going to uh like I don't know take some short clips of me leaving the house, of me being in the plane, and then, you know, me being at the hostel or the uh, Spring Mountain Lodge, and then at the arches, and then setting foot on the trail. And I'll make an opening sequence with those clips, with a music background for my... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll make that when I, I do my, uh, my first video, that way, the first episode, day zero and day one, which I will probably do together, um, will have, uh, a brand new 
AT through hike intro. And then I may use Canva to make little individual episode title um, screens that are like five seconds long to put after my intro. I like do the Gecko's Trails AT 2022 intro and then have that screen saying day zero dash one and have a little title and then go into the video and I'll I'll try to make it as cinematic as possible not just like I'm doing now just holding the phone in front of me and letting y'all just watch while I talk I'll I'll do some like cutaways and walk bys and stuff like that that you see you know, Ivy Tat and Early Riser and Darwin and all those guys do. And eventually I'll get better at doing it. I mean, my I know that first uh, opening title sequence, I did a couple of those. And a couple of my hikes, I've tried to do it. It's just, you know, when I just have a phone and I don't really have a tripod, the dog ate my tripod. Um, which is another piece of gear I'm going to have to get. Thank you for reminding me. Um, you know, I'm going to have to have a way to, like, sit it in a tree or uh, set it on the ground where it will be the best angles to catch me walking by or walking up to or away from or, you know, angled down at me walking under it or whatever, you know. You know, I'll, I'll find some, I'll make it work. However it is I can find to make it work, I'll make it work. Um, but yeah. That's, that's, right now, that's the main worry that I have is, is the temperature variances and me just being too cold all the time and burning out and saying, you know, I'm done. I don't want to be cold anymore. I'm, that's what I'm going to actively have to fight starting the trail. It's not going to be the walking. I don't think that's going to bother me uh, because I walk every day. You know, either at work, because uh, I'll walk 14 to 26,000 steps in the night, you know. I'm walking a couple of miles working. <clears throat> and then on my days off, I'm doing this several times a night, mostly these days. I've been known to go for these three-mile walks two or three times a night. Just because, you know, I get out here and I make these videos. And now I make videos for my other YouTube channel as well. So that's another excuse for me to walk this three miles. <laughs> Which is good. It gets me... It gets me used to walking. And that's what being on the trail is. It's walking constantly. From basically the time you get up to the time you go to bed. You know, not every minute of the day, but, you know, for the most part. And that's another thing I'm going to have to work on while I'm hiking is taking breaks. You know, the type of hiking that I do here in like, you know, Purgatory Creek Natural Area, I'm there to hike and go home. I'm not there to hike all day. I'm, I, I get my hike done and I go home. I've got to, you know, stop doing that. I got, somehow, I have to get used to starting at, you know, 6 or 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning and hiking to like 6 in the evening. And taking, if I walked the entire time, you know, 
and then in that time period I'd get the miles in but I would burn myself out in the first week I've got to learn how to take breaks like an hour here an hour there two hours here you know so I don't burn myself out You know, break out some of my gear, you know, my sleep, my, uh, w whatever I need and just sit down, maybe take a nap or something, you know, of course I can't really take a nap on the, in the Purgatory Creek natural area, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to have to figure it out. And it's probably going to be one of those things I'm going to have to figure out on the trail. You know. Oh. And that's... That right there going into a through hike is what makes it the most scary. Is you're you're kind of not thinking about the experience you're thinking about all the little failure points and i think that's what messes with a lot of people's heads when they get on trail is they've been focusing on all these parts of themselves that are going to make them fail that it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy and it happens they're like, oh, I was just too cold. I got to go home. Or, uh, I, I, I spend, I've walked too much every day and I, I just can't do it anymore. I got to go home. Yeah, I can't really think like that. I mean, I know I'm kind of thinking like that now, but I'm thinking like that now. So I can try to come up with solutions for when I get out there, I'm not thinking about it. And I'm concentrating on the journey, not my limitations, not my, my failings, because I've concentrated on my failings before I ever got on the trail and came up with solutions, you know, little tips and tricks to try to minimize that aspect of me being on the trail. And hopefully that will contribute to my success, a successful through hike. And I also have to get ready to basically let go of this modern world, all the comforts and conveniences that I enjoy every day being here at home. You know, the nice comfy house with the comfy chairs and the computer that I can sit back and stream anything I want on because I have unlimited Wi-Fi. And, you know, even, even sitting in a warm environment in a comfortable situation and making my videos, you know, I'm gonna have to get it in my head that I'm gonna be out in the elements with very little creature comforts doing these things in very uncomfortable situations. Whether it's, I, I, don't, I don't know, because I've never been in that situation yet. But I have to get it in my head that I'm going to have to make do with what's around me and what I can carry on my back. And I have to make sure that what I'm carrying on my back isn't going to make me fail my through hike by being too heavy, um, being a non-essential piece of gear that I could do without and become very minimalist, which I'm already trying to be minimalist in my life. I don't have that much in the way of possessions. I mean, I've got some clothes. I've got 
my my uh, hiking gear now. Um, I do have some swords and daggers and stuff at a little collection that I had started that you know I'm I'm kind of getting ready to let go of and and I don't know put them on Craigslist or eBay or something. Um, I have a minimal book collection. Um, uh, although if I, you know, once I finish, you know, once I settle to where I'm going to settle, wherever that is, I'll start a physical, oh, sorry, a physical book collection because I love books. Um, and it will be like all the Forgotten Realms books, all the, uh, all the D&D, &D, Dungeons and Dragons realm books, you know, Forgotten Realms, Dragonlance, um, all the others, um, I want to get those. I want to get all the Star Trek books, all the Star Wars books. Um, all the like uh Sword of Truth series books from uh uh was it Robert or Terry Goodkind. I want to get all of the Shannara books, uh Terry Brooks. Um even though I've read it once and I swore I would never read it again, I probably will end up reading it again. But the Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series, um, just because, you know, each book was like massive and there's like 14 of them. So, I mean, it ended up being a hugely long story. But one that was also hugely detailed and involved with multiple, like, dozens of mini storylines all going on at the same time. You really had to pay attention reading that book or you'd get yourself lost. But it's so worth it. And if I'm remembering correctly, they're actually making a TV series out of it. I think I saw a trailer for it. Um, which will be awesome. But there's other um, book collections that I want to get as well. Um, like, I'm not a huge fan, but I'd like to get all the Anne Rice vampire books and, and the... Uh, Mayfair Witches books and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, I also want to get a movie and a TV series video collection going because I love watching movies and videos and TV series. You know, get all the ones that I liked in the past that I used to have that I don't have anymore, like Angel and Charmed and Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Lost. And just, there's dozens and dozens of other TV series that I want to get the complete series of so I can watch them whenever I want, whenever I want. Um, and that, when I talk about being materialistic, that's kind of what I mean. Books and movies. I'm not really... Oh, well... I'm also a collector. Which is odd for somebody wanting to be a minimalist. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But a lot of the things that I collect are books. Like I have an analog number one. And I have a Buffy the Vampire Slayer number one. Or one half. It was the Wizard Magazine Edition 
the one half edition uh, but it's it's got a certificate of authenticity and it's numbered um, also have a re-release of I Dream of Genie number one that is signed by the artists and writers. And I've got a 1930 World's Fair Bible, huge family Bible. I mean, the thing's massive. And it's never been wrote in. All the little, you know, family tree stuff and owner stuff, never been filled in. It's completely blank. Still has the the uh, bookmark ribbon on it. And, you know, it's 2021. That thing's almost 100 years old. And like I said, if I ever had the opportunity to own a first edition signed copy UK printing of The Hobbit, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Oh, somebody just got a flat. Is that 18 wheeler? I'm sure he's cursing right about now. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, I've just, I have to do everything I can now in my preparation for being on the trail to kind of prepare myself mentally and physically, and I don't mean by working out, but mentally and physically and emotionally to be on the trail. You know, I don't think the... Uh, being alone is gonna be much of a factor although it probably will be because I think it's not it probably will be I mean when I go hiking here I'm by myself but I go home at night and I've got my my family around me that's what I would hope to have on the trail a tramley you know, people I can camp with that I can have fun with. But when I'm hiking, I can be by myself. But also know that there's people in front of me and behind me that got my back. You know? And that's something that is a luxury being on the trail. Because not everybody out there is going to want a, a tramley or or whatnot or never find one and that's a real possibility as well i'm not going to be starting when the bubble starts i'm going to be starting slightly before the bubble uh, because i think a lot of people start mid-april like april 24th but i'm starting mid-march so i'm kind of getting a month head start on people which is why the cold is going to be a factor for me because I'm starting earlier in the spring. And I've watched multiple people through hikes that started when I plan on starting that had to deal with snow and uh, Smokies and really cold conditions in the Smokies. And I kind of foresee that happening. Um, now... I have camped um, when it was kind of chilly out before, you know, being, you know, going to these rent fairs and stuff. You know, we, we camp on the weekend. On the weekends we go. So, I mean, but we have a fire. We, we bring a fire pit with us. And uh, we have a blow up mattress that we put in there. We, we, you know, back the car up to the tent and plug it in and blow it up. And it's a queen size air mattress, you know, in our tent, you know, that's a luxury. <laughs> I mean, that's not a, 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 a Neo air, whatever, you know, that's tiny and thin.
But then again, that big old air mattress, you know, when it's cold, becomes a refrigerated mattress. <laughs> and it's cold. So, that's kind of why I wanted to not only have the Neo Air light or whatever, I also have wanted to take one of the roll-up foam pads to put under it to kind of keep the temperature up in the air in the, the air mattress. Again, in an effort to keep my ass warm on the trail. And then, of course, I'm going to have a sleeping bag liner to put, you know, in my quilt with me. You know, because I've, I've pretty much decided to get a quilt instead of a, a sleeping bag. Because of the way I sleep, it's going to be the most comfortable. You know, because I sleep on my stomach with my knee cocked up, you know, whichever side my head's turned, that side, that, that top knee is out, you know. And it's kind of hard to do when you're in a cocoon, you know. <laughs> Unless you get an ultra, uh, an extra wide sleeping bag, you know, which I could do. That may be something to look into because the sleeping cocoon styled sleeping bag is going to keep me warmer. But once summer comes, you know, I'm going to want a quilt, you know, because I'm not going to want to be zipped up like that. But again, with the mummy bag, or the cocoon. All I have to do is unzip it. I can still have it around me. It's just unzipped. I can put as much of it off of me as I want. Or hell, I might just 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 sleep in the uh, the bag liner. You never know. It's one of those things I'm just going to have to see what happens when I'm in, in that situation, you know? So. Uh. Another thing I'm going to have to do is kind of streamline my med kit you know what um first aid supplies i want to have with me on the trail i mean i'm definitely going to need ibuprofen that's that's a given um but as far as band-aids and tape and gauze pads and whatever else I've got to make a decision on how much stuff I want to take with me. I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to get uh, um, like moleskin or in KT tape, even though I've never used KT tape before. I don't, I'm going to have to Google how to use it. Um, I have no clue how it works. Um, and I don't know. I mean, I'm probably going to invest in a pair of Njinji toe socks uh, to see if that helps with uh, blisters especially between the toes. Um, I'll start off wearing them. And if they give me blister, if they give me blisters, then I'll, I'll stop using them. But I'm hoping that it'll keep my toes from rubbing together and forming the blisters and rubbing against the so much on the bottom of the shoes I, I I don't know how it's gonna help but I'm gonna see if it does now uh, you know just walking what I walk here on the sidewalk you know two or three times a day 
I don't get any blisters. But then again, I'm not walking on a trail that has rocks and roots and elevation changes. And I'm always using the same parts of my foot when I walk. I'm not like climbing where I'm using mostly the balls of my feet or descending where I'm using mainly my heels to slow me down. So there is that. I'm gonna have to figure that out. So I'm doing everything in my can to kind of everything I can to kind of minimalize the negative effects that the trail is going to throw at me before I get on the trail. That's the hope anyway. What I'm thinking and doing may not help at all. I don't know. It may do nothing. But at least I'm being conscious about it. You know, I recognize that it could be a problem on the trail. There may be nothing I can do to get prepared for it. But maybe I can do something and that might be the help that keeps me from quitting. You know? I mean, nobody ever set out to through hike the Appalachian Trail that didn't think that they'd make it when they started. They all thought they would they could make it, you know? For the most part. I'm sure there's some that says, well, I'm going to try it and have no real true ambition to complete it. They started out with an out, you know, I'm going to try. It's not like I'm going to do it. You know, they didn't, they kind of set themselves up for failure by not fully committing they only halfway committed. They sort of committed. Me, I'm going on this with aspirations of hitting the PCT and the CDT afterwards. So, six, you know, my success is part of the plan. It's not an eventuality that might happen. You know, to get to the PCT, I have to finish the AT successfully. Because if I don't, then what's the point of going to the PCT? I'm going into this with the aspiration of attaining the Triple Crown. That is my long-term goal. My short-term goal for now is getting to the trail. And then it's going to be to complete the trail. And once I get to the trail... There will be little micro goals that I set myself to get to Katahdin. But that, I guess, I guess you could call that a mid-range goal. The short-term goals are always going to be day-to-day. Sometimes minute-to-minute. -minute, you know, depending on how exhausted you get, you know. Because I've been, wa I watched Ivy Tat. On, on multiple through hikes going you know I just got to focus on getting to that that tree I got to get to I got to get to the, that ridge and you know line of sight goals you know sometimes that's what it takes and sometimes you're not even thinking about goals you're in you know auto hike mode where you're not even looking around you. You're staring basically at your feet until you reach your camp. And But you miss out on a lot of stuff by doing that. But I get it. Sometimes you're just that exhausted. And at that particular moment in time, you don't care about views. You don't care about seeing the mountains in the distance she just care about getting to camp and resting and relaxing and recharging for the next day I'm hoping I don't have many of those days because I really want to take full advantage of the journey 
and see everything that I can see and experience everything that I can experience. And I'll be honest, um, I was kind of hyped and I know this is kind of sad, but I was kind of hyped about being in some of these states where marijuana is legal so I could, you know, partake. But I've had the opportunity here lately to kind of do that through a vape pen and gummies. And honestly, I didn't like the way it made me feel. I mean, the vape pen fucked me up so bad that I could not move. I was sitting Indian style in the mid middle of our old bedroom because we were moving at the time. And I literally had my head in my hands and my eyes closed because if I opened them, the world would spin so violently. I didn't know why I was being thrown. I wasn't being thrown to the floor. The vertigo was that bad. And I was, I was literally scared. I didn't know how bad it was going to get. And it was bad. I mean, I don't know how close I came to asking my wife to take me to the emergency room. Um, but that would have required moving. And at that point, I could not move. And it was... I tried everything in my power not it not to pass out which luckily I didn't eventually I got to the point where I moved myself enough and made myself like a little pallet on the floor from blankets and I fell asleep and I slept it off but that was the day we were moving all of the the heavy items in the house we had uh, my stepson and his friends who actually had the vapes and shared didn't tell me that it was like an extra potent mix of THC than normal and I took like three or four hits off of it and they're like oh my god you were only supposed to take one and I'm like well a little too late now I mean my head from my neck up felt like it was on fire. Uh, like literally burning fire. I hope to never experience that again. And then yesterday, one of my wife's co-workers had a gummy that they had gotten from Vegas. Uh, whether it was shipped to the through the mail or not, I don't I don't know. But uh, and she gave us one, you know, each. My wife still has hers. She didn't take it. I took mine, and I'd already had a drink at that point because we were at a bar. I had a Long Island iced tea. It's my drink of choice when I'm out in a normal bar. Um, and when I say normal bar, I mean not a drag drag club you know uh the, i have my own specialty drink that i drink at stonewall warehouse that i'm sure i'd go to another bar and ask for it and they'd go what i've never heard of that you know it's one of those stonewall warehouse specific drinks <laughs> it's called a royal fuck and it's basically Crown, Patron, and Cranberry Juice or something like that. But it's really good. It tastes like cotton candy. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, that one, it, once it hit, I had dry mouth. And I felt tipsy. Like, uh, if I was to get up, that I would stumble and fall. So I stayed sitting down the entire time. But the times where I was standing, it felt like my knees were very weak and were kind of giving out. But I don't know 
if that was because of the gummies or because I was so fucking cold. I was freezing last night. I mean, to the point where I had to go out to the car and get my leather jacket and put it on and I was still cold. Because we'd go outside and it was cold, we'd stand around the fire pits because they had fire pits in, in the center of all the benches around whatever, you know. Uh, they, were, they, were, they were basically tables with, with gas stove like fire pits in them uh, that you could sit around, which was really cool and it was fun. And, uh, and, but then, you know, they kind of moved inside to the dance floor and the area where we were, they had fans blowing. So I was standing right under one of those fans and it was freezing cold, but there was no place to sit, you know, and my, my legs were shaking. And so I don't know if it was because of the gummies or because I was so fucking cold, <laughs> But I made it through and eventually the gummy kind of wore off and I had a little bit more fun. You know, I don't dance or anything. So I was just there to watch people, you know, which I don't mind watching people. It's kind of fun, you know. And But the thing about I can drink and I can I can be buzzed all night or even be slightly drunk, although I don't like being drunk. Uh... I wake up in the morning and I'm perfectly fine with gummies and the vape. Oh man, I had, I had hangovers and I've never had a hangover before, but with the, the, the vape and the gummies, I, I did have a hangover. I still kind of feel hungover and I've been awake all, all night, you know? We were supposed to go to Stonewall tonight, but neither one of us kind of fell, felt up to it. Uh, you know, me being hungover and, but my wife was sore after dancing. Her legs and, and stuff were sore because she doesn't go dancing often. But that's something we're going to have to fix because she deserves to go out and have fun, you know? And if she loves to dance, she should be able to go out and dance. You know, I, it shouldn't be, I shouldn't be hindering her having fun, which, you know, is one of the reasons why we're poly, polyamorous. So she can go out and have fun, her kind of fun, and I can go out and have my kind of fun or whatever. Because, you know, I don't, she doesn't have to be with me when I go to these drag shows or, or Stonewall or whatever else. And we're kind of open to seeing other people, you know, if I find somebody I'm attracted to. As long as I tell her, you know, hey, I met this guy or whatever, I met this girl or whatever, and, you know, we kind of hit it off and blah, 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 and blah, 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 you know, and she's going to be okay with it and just be safe and, you know, and whatever. And same with her, you know, she finds a guy or a girl that she's attracted to, like her little girlfriend, Wednesday. Uh, well, I shouldn't have said the name. Sorry. Forget I said that. I might edit that little section out. Because I shouldn't have said the name. For, you know, privacy purposes. Uh, but, you know, and she's hung out with other, you know, guys. Because she's, like, in the BDSM. And so they go to the BDSM clubs and have fun. And that's perfectly fine, you know. But that's you know, just how we roll. That's the, where our relationship has gone. Which is perfectly fine. We're both comfortable with it. I mean, and if I'm going to be gone four to six to eight months out of the year for the next couple of years or whatever, you know, she's she deserves to go out and have fun with her friends and or significant others other than me. You know? And, you know, who knows, I might meet somebody on the trail and have like a, a little trail fling, you know? And as long as I let her know and and whatever and kind of tell her about it, you know, it'll be fine. Like when I was in Colorado, there was a guy I was attracted to and, 
and I'd always talk about him to her, you know? So, oh, me and so-and-so did this, and me and so-and-so talked about this, and we hung out, and blah, 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 and we, uh, we went to bonfire, and blah, 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 and hell, I, I still talk to him, and he's still at the Y, and I'm here. And uh, if he watches these videos, he'll know who I'm talking about. <laughs> I would hope he would know, he would realize who I'm talking about. But I don't know if he watches these videos. Actually, there was a couple of guys I was attracted to, but one kind of reminded me of my drag queen that I've got a crush on here. But. Oddly, it was the other guy that kept my attention, which I'm kind of glad he did. He was an awesome guy. Anyway, so, you know, tro uh, trail romances aren't out of the picture. <clears throat> But, you know, I'm going to go into it saying, hey, this is my situation. You know, we're okay with this. You know, are you okay with this? You know, type deal. Going into it, I'm not going to say, you know, have this romance and say, oh, and by the way, I'm married. You know, and kind of, you know, if that's a sticky point, you know, I don't want it to be an issue. If it, if it is a sticky point, I would rather get it out in the open before anything got started. But if they're okay with it, it's game on, you know. <laughs> or maybe it's gay on. I don't know. <sighs> oh. I had Hawaiian food for dinner. It's kind of coming back to haunt me. Not in a bad way. Just I'm feeling extremely full. I don't know why I'm going this way. I don't need to go this way. Oh well, too late now. I'm not turning around. I, got, I came this way on autopilot. Uh, last time I went for a walk when it was just getting dusk, I, I wanted to come this way to get the mail, but don't need to get the mail down. I just, you know, autopilot. Wasn't thinking, I was talking. I was distracted. So, yeah. So that's, that's kind of the things I wanted to talk about this time on my old walk and talk was, you know, kind of the fears going into hiking a trail weather and temperature wise you know due to my experiences and my uh i guess body chemistry right now you know because of the quote unquote trauma weather trauma i've gone through in the past and also you know kind of getting into the mindset of not having the conveniences and modern comforts that we have in this so-called modern society you know we would have been much better off living like the native americans did rather than all of this you know all of this i mean granted a lot of these houses are solar by design um it's still it's still connected to the grids it's connected to the sewage it's connected to the water it's still connected to the power lines it's just you know you're using solar so your energy bill is a little bit less but honestly if you add up all of our utilities that we pay for here we're paying just as much as we did at the old place which is around four or five hundred dollars a month and I'm not really seeing that much savings from having solar. 
and I don't know why that is. I mean, why have solar if it's not going to make an impact on your your monthly bill, you know? I mean, I, I get being sustainable and kind of taking that the uh, the energy funnel away from uh, nuclear and fossil fuel. Um, but there should also be a monetary savings too. Because you're basically getting your energy not from the grid, but from the sun. So you should be paying less per month than in a non-solar place. And that I, I'm, I'm finding that's not the case. And I don't really know why. What is that? Garbage can. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> All right. Well, that pretty much wraps up this episode. This walk and talk, this midnight ramble. And as soon as I get under this light, I will turn you around and bid y'all a fond farewell. And now for the fond farewell. <laughs> so, as always, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. There it is. And if you liked this video or any, 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 any other video that I've made, go ahead and hit that like button. And go ahead and swipe that notification bell to be notified anytime I upload a new movie. So you will never miss out on my frantically freaky fiascos. To be perfectly illiterate. <laughs> okay, well, that's that's enough. I'm, I'm, yeah. We'll see y'all later. Y'all take care.